Runner, Part 2, Chapter 8. The first few years we lived on the boat, my dad would heat up some sort of turkey loaf and deli mashed potatoes for Thanksgiving. Some years he even bought a pumpkin pie. He was trying, but all he did, did was make me feel mom's absence even more. Now we basically treat Thanksgiving and Christmas and birthdays as if they are any other day of the week. Since there's no buildup, there's no letdown. Thanksgiving came and went. The morning after Thanksgiving, my dad gave me $130 to help with the mortgage fee, he said. I've had a few jobs lately, mainly guys getting their boats ready for winter. I was about to tell him I didn't need it, but I stopped myself in time. Thanks, I said. This will help a lot. That evening, after he'd taken off for wherever it was he was going, I grabbed a jacket and walked the length of the marina to the long stairway leading up to 32nd Avenue in the Blue Note Cafe. It's about 100 steps straight up, so I was breathing hard when I finally reached the top. I caught my breath, then crossed the street and entered the cafe. Melissa, her brown shoulder-length hair pulled into a short ponytail, was sitting at the table in the back. She waved, and I walked back to meet her. You know Thomas Dowell and Amy Co Annie Comstock, don't you? Sure, I said, though I hadn't spoken ten words to either of them the whole time I'd been at Lincoln. Good to see you. Thomas and Annie had already bought their food, so I was able to go to the front counter with Melissa. A large mocha and a scone, she said to the girl taking orders. I'll have the same, I said. We stood side by side as the girl put our order on the counter. I'm really glad you came, Melissa said. I didn't think you would. I wasn't sure I would either. I know most people think the newspaper is nerdy and all, but it really isn't. Before I had to answer, the order came up. I'll pay, I said, taking out my wallet. You pay for yours and I'll pay for mine, Melissa said. No, I said, you bought it, little Coney. I'm paying this time. We carried our food back to the table. While we'd been gone, Natasha Martin had joined the others. I can only stay for a little while, she said. My cousin from North Carolina is visiting. He got accepted into Harvard last week. 1550 on the SAT. My parents want me to talk to him, as if talking about the SAT will help me, help me score higher. I'll be lucky to get into Central Washington. You'll get into a good school, Melissa said. You know you will. For the next half hour, they talked about colleges. One place was great for pre-law, while another had a fantastic biology program. Some other place had a sister school in Istanbul, and another one had a junior year program in Paris. Most of the schools they'd mentioned I'd never heard of. Occasionally, Melissa would look over at me and smile. I'd always thought that if I had a few bucks in my pocket, I'd be even, I'd be even with kids like Melissa and Thomas and Annie and Natasha. Now I had money probably more money than anyone else at the table, but it didn't even things up at all. They were still them and I was still me. Maybe we should talk about the newspaper, Melissa said at last. That's why we're here, isn't it? Thomas groaned. Couldn't we just skip it? Melissa shook her head. Chance came because he's interested in joining the staff. That's okay, I muttered. Talk about whatever you want to talk about. Thomas smiled. See, Melissa, he doesn't care. Well, I do, Melissa said, and I'm the editor, so let's get to the meeting. Melissa told them about the rats living in the rocks. She looked to Thomas. Maybe you could take some pictures and Chance could write it up. I panicked, but Thomas saved me. Saved me. I don't want to get into cutesy bunny and kitten crap. That sort of stuff is for the Wednesday shopper. He looked at me. No offense, Chance. Melissa sighed. All right, anybody else have any ideas for Chance? Something to get, something to do with the waterfront? How about if he writes about the seals in the harbor, Annie said, the ones that are eating all the salmon and ruining the salmon runs. That's old news, Melissa said. The Times has had about 50 articles about that. He could write about the threat of terrorism, Natasha said. What threat of terrorism, Melissa said. My dad has a friend who works for the FBI. He says they're really worried about the ports. There are zillions of boats floating around on the sound, and nobody keeps track of them. Terrorism could sail. Terrorists could sail. In and blow up whatever they wanted. Melissa looked at me. Is that true? I wouldn't say nobody keeps track, I said. There's a Coast Guard and the Port Police and there's Customs and there's Immigration. Homeland Security must be down there too, but I don't think I've ever seen them. But they don't check all the boats, do they? Natasha insisted. No, I said. How could they? Tom Thomas snorted in disgust. I can see the headline now. Terrorists at Shills Hole, a Lincoln Light exclusive. What's so ridiculous about it? Natasha snapped. It's not impossible that terrorists could come through Shill's Hole. And if they do, reporters from the Lincoln Light will be there to catch them, Thomas said. He turned to Melissa. I bet Stanford will admit, admit you if you win a Pulitzer. Very funny, Thomas, Melissa said. And then she turned to me. It isn't a bad idea, Chance. It really isn't. You don't have to find real terrorists or anything like that. All you have to do is write about how easy it would be to find for terrorists to get into the marina. It's worth thinking about. 
Okay, he can think about it, Thomas said, interrupting. And while he's thinking about it, I'll write the end of the season wrap up for soccer, volleyball, and football. But if you've but if you've but you've got to get the newspaper out before Christmas break, Melissa, or it will all be dumb. You know that, don't you? I know it, Melissa said, and it will come out before Christmas. I guarantee it. Natasha looked at her watch. Oh my gosh, she said. I have I was supposed to be home thirty minutes ago. I saw my chance. I've got to go too. Get down there and check the docks, chance, Thomas said. Some terrorist might be sailing in tonight with a nuclear bomb. You wouldn't want to miss that. You're not funny, Thomas, Melissa said. She stood and turned to me. I'll go out with you. Outside, the night air was cold. She walked across the street with me to the top of the stairway. Don't pay attention to Thomas, she said. That's just how he is. You will write something, won't you? I shrugged. About what? You could write about the same in runs. It is important, even if it's not new. I won't be able to get a newspaper out by Christmas if I don't get some stories soon.